All right, guys, you selected PC and XSplit using an HD PVR, and I'm going to walk you guys through exactly how you can do that on your XSplit PC, XSplit enabled PC with your HD PVR right now, right here. Uh, again, guys, just to completely clarify this, these may not be the best settings for you. However, this should give you a good benchmark and foundation for what could work for you, because as I said before, this is the result of a lot of testing, and it works well for my internet. Now, for some reason, XSplit with an HD PVR does not seem to work for as well for me as a black magic does i am not able to stream in hd uh, at least it doesn't look quite as good but i'm going to walk you through my settings for hd streaming and i'm going to walk you through my settings for sd streaming or non hd streaming for both looks that work quite well so uh, with that in mind let me walk you guys through the first steps let's go ahead and open xsplit here's xsplit broadcaster right here we're also going to open up our capture program which for me is total media extreme 2 and record video we'll pull this stuff up right now i may have to click a quick button here Yep, I had to click a button just to allow this thing to uh, to actually work properly. But we'll go ahead and pull this up, and uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Refresh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hop Hog HD PVR. We're going to pull this up right now because there's two different ways that you can do this. If you're using an old version of XSplit, you can actually drag an area on the screen. And this is what I had to do for a very long time, but now it seems to be working much better. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it both ways. So first and foremost, you've got this option right here to buy XSplit for $39 for two years. If you're going to be using XSplit, this is a great idea. My understanding is that they are actually working really hard right now to make this XSplit program as good or better than what you would find with uh, good old, what's it called? Good old, what's it called? Uh, Wirecast, there you go, Wirecast. So uh, really quickly, taking this down to scratch, you're gonna start with this right here, as you can see on the screen, you've got the simple XSplit broadcaster window, and we're gonna start by adding a screen region. If you are using an old version of XSplit, this is how you have to do it. You're gonna go just like this, capture that capture area window and then you can drag this and make it larger now this is actually something worth mentioning right here guys uh, anytime that you're doing <clears throat> making any kind of a change here on xsplit you need to make the window full size basically by dragging it around and showing it as full size now with that in mind you can add additional windows and additional scenes very very easily by adding additional screen regions if you're one of those few people in the world who have a multiple uh, screen setup, you know, two or three screens on your on your computer. This works out really well because you're able to add different windows and show multiple things at once. XSplit makes it simple. I have to say, like, you know, even though I'm a Wirecast user now, XSplit was fantastic because it allowed me to put picture in picture and do a lot of things I would not otherwise have been able to do. But with that in mind, I want to go ahead and back things out right here, right now, and show you the new functions of XSplit that are just freaking fantastic. Because now you can add cameras that are not just black magics, not just actual cameras. You can actually add your hop hog right here, hop hog HD PVR device. Let me pull it up right now and see if it comes up. I believe I added it there. I believe it might be freezing up, but there it is. All right, so the hop hog is now in screen. You can see it right there. That's my screen. It's it's pulled up. I have 56 messages and, and seven friends online right now. And as you can see, it looks great. It looks simple. Now few things to set up first and foremost. The first thing you want to choose is exactly what resolution in which you want to stream. So for most people, that's going to be, oh, I clicked the wrong one. For most people, that's going to be 720p, which is 1280 by 720. It's a 16 by 9. Now, anytime you're streaming any kind of a, <clears throat> uh, where's my words here, any kind of a gameplay, they're most likely going to be in 16 by 9. That's the average format. Uh, so keep that in mind. You're probably going to be streaming in 16 by 9 format. Now, uh, you can stream in 1080p if you want to, if you have the internet to support that. I've done that quite a bit uh, when I'm doing non-gaming stuff because just streaming in 1080p feels cool. Uh, secondarily, you can drop it back down to 432 if your internet's low or even 360p if your internet's really low. Now, I have had some issues with my internet. I've been streaming a lot in 360p when I was using XSplit, and I found it to work very effectively but there's also one other thing you can do to help your connection play better use better and look still look pretty much just as good not quite as good but nearly as good and that is changing your frame rate and this is something else you want to change off the start so frame rate for me usually is 60 frames per second because 60 frames per second is what the game is native in. it's actually 59.97 but you can use 60 frames or 59.94 and that will give you what the game is native in which is what it looks best in that works fantastically however a lot of times if your internet is having issues if you're struggling to keep 
your frame rate up in your game, if you're struggling to keep the frames from dropping and being laggy on the stream, you may want to lower that frame rate down to a little bit lower. 30 frames per second works fine. However, just a quick tidbit here, 24 frames per second is what they use in the movies. It's not super fast. It's not as fluid as 60 frames per second. However, it's what we're accustomed to watching on TV and in movies. So if you click 24 or 25 frames per second, you'll be surprised by how good that looks and how much less internet that takes. Not just internet, but also processor power, etc. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're in 720p and you have this giant window on your screen and you don't want it there, something else you can do that's very effective is scaling your viewpoint. You can drop this right here down to 40% and now you have a very small window on the screen just in case you do something like what I do, which is using a, an actual camera camera instead of a webcam. So I actually have to capture a screen region for that camera. I'll show that a little bit later. But I want to take you guys through your broadcast settings right now. So first and foremost, you can see right here, my broadcast settings are under Justin. So that's Twitch TV. You can add channels right here, RTMPs, live streams, 3D, Ustream, etc. My understanding is you can even do YouTube streams through here. And if you can't yet, you will be able to very soon. So with this in mind, we're going to click edit right now and pull up this channel information because I want to show you guys what this can look like and how you can leverage it for the best possible outlook. So you get your username, password, uh, and <clears throat> all the rest of the information right here. Presets, exploit default. Here is where it gets interesting. These things right here are what you're going to change constantly. First and foremost, your quality. I ran at 10 quality all the time. However, I discovered my internet could not handle that. And again, guys, internet is crucial in this stuff. I have between four and mega, four and 10 megabytes of upload speed. Usually four to eight is my average. And because it's with Comcast, you never know if it's gonna be four, 0.4, or eight. So I like to run at a consistent speed that's low so that I know that I will still be able to play games and my stream will stay up. So seven, I found to be a pretty darn good quality setting. It looked quite good. It's pretty clean. It's definitely worth trying. The next thing you want to do is change around and play around with your bit rate. For 720p viewing, I find that 1500 bit rate is a must. 1500 bit rate, you know, I won't, let me rephrase that. It's not a must, but it really does help with the look. Plus it helps keep the, the, the video up with the audio, which brings me to audio. We're gonna go through this stuff together with starting at 720p, 1500 bit rate minimum is what my highest recommendation is. You wanna use the default stage resolution is the same thing as you're, as you're streaming in, and this works, okay? So uh, 1500 bit rate for the video up, and then for the audio, you want to play around with this. I recommend a higher one, like 256,000, because what you'll find is by using 256, that's actually only 256 uh, kbps. It's not a lot, it works really well. Uh, you can use any of these. I recommend MP3 just because it's audio that we're more comfortable with and the way it sounds. So with that in mind, definitely, definitely recommend using a high audio bit rate because it helps your stream sound better than the rest. Now, with that in mind, let's jump down to imagining if we were streaming this in 360p or, you know, you can basically find something in between for those of you who have a mid-range level of quality. You can take this right here, follow along with me. We're going to go 128 and 700. That means my entire up rate is 828, not even one megabyte up. So for those of you who are running a two or three megabyte up connection, you'll have a much better luck with this, with this setup right here. And you'll find that it's still quite effective for beautiful streams. Again, reminding you guys that you can lower your size, your resolution size, and you can easily re lower your uh, frames per second. So those are two things to keep in mind as you're going along. All right, the next item I want to bring to your attention is the sound settings that you can do right here on the dashboard of XSplit that it will be imperative to the way in which you do this. Now, here's what you want to look at first and foremost. You notice that my microphone, you can see it going off right here. It's talking away, talking away. You can actually change that setting as to which microphone you want to use in the edit channel setting under general right here. You can choose which microphone you want. However, what I want you guys to keep in mind right here is that it is fully barred up, like it's, it's turned all the way up. However, the system sound and the hot pog sound is set a bit lower, as you can see right here. It is set just about the halfway mark. I kind of undulate this depending on what game I'm playing. Modern Warfare 3 requires a little bit lower than half, uh, or right, you know, just around the half area. Battlefield 3 can be turned up a little bit higher. Obviously, games like Forza and whatnot, you want to have a bit higher because that game sound is just beautiful. However, you want to make sure that when people are coming to your stream, they're coming to be entertained by you and not to hear your game sounds inundated 
updating the stream. So you want to make sure you keep that at a very nice balance. Now, with that in mind, there's one other thing you ought to consider doing, and that is playing with your volume mixers here. Because oftentimes I like to play music through my stream and whatnot. You want to be changing your iTunes coverage and everything else that you're doing to make sure that you have the volume settings correct. As you can see right here, I have capture module turned all the way down because I didn't want to be hearing that through my headphones as I was streaming in Wirecast. And that's something else we'll be teaching you more about later is Wirecast and how to use that with the Black Magic Intensity Pro. Now, as we're moving forward from here, guys, you'll notice that this is not the easiest thing in the world to do, but hopefully with these settings and advice, you'll be able to get this up and running much faster than I did. If you have any trouble or questions, feel free to leave them below. And I'll do all that I can to answer. I would, do have to give a big thank you to my friends who helped me get this stuff set up. I can't even imagine how I would have done it without them. Steve Schwint, Ernest Lee, Justra. Dunkus, I mean, everyone, there's been so much help along the way trying to get this thing set up. Uh, Matt or Fisher 12, he's uh, from Mac OS X Tutorials 12, has been absolutely instrumental, and I'll be thanking them again in each one of these videos. But if you'd like to learn more about how to stream with Wirecast on PC, or if you'd like to learn how to, how to stream on a Mac, please click on the annotations at the end of the video. If you have any questions, again, leave them below, and I'll look forward to answering them for you in the near future. Have a great day. Bye bye.